Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films, and I'm your host, Coach Evans. Today, we're going to talk about Calais Campbell, the newest Baltimore Monster. Uh, got traded from Jacksonville for a fifth round pick, which is, in my opinion, a steal. <laughs> EDC, man, you, you, you're you a gangster, man. You're, you're a, a GM GM version gangster, however that, that fits in there. You, you're the gangster version of a GM. You started making steals off these picks. Fifth round pick got us. Um, Marcus Peters, you got a fifth round for, I think, for Vedvik. You got this from, from Jacksonville, and you're not going to have to pay him the $15 million that Jacksonville was 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 due to him. So you got Calais Campbell in here. You got a guy that's uh, been a nominee for Walter Payton Man of the Year, so you got a high-character guy. You got an extremely productive guy. You got a guy that's going to – you feel the need, uh, a, a big need, and you – um. Basically made a big splash before free agency even hits or starts later on today. Basically, with the um, the tampering period starting at noon, if I'm not mistaken. And today is Monday the what's today the 16th. So I'm recording this Monday morning. So the tampering period starts at noon, and uh, actual free agency starts Wednesday. But you made a splash with without going around it. And I heard um, In Raven mention that it's good to do this in a trade, which I agree with him because you lock him up. If he'd hit the free agent market or been cut, anybody could have offered him anything. And we're restructuring that deal. And if I'm not mistaken, the deal is two years, twenty million or twenty-four million. I think maybe twenty-four million with twenty of that guaranteed. And he has incentives to make a little more uh, in 2021. So, um, man, I, I appreciate your EDC for for filling needs and identifying people. And funny, this thing, this guy was a, a topic in a few Raven circles maybe two months ago. Maybe saying, you know, a couple people on Twitter said they'd be interested in him. Uh, I want to say me and Sonny and Joe even mentioned them before. One of us did. Uh, you know, if he would become available, how would you feel about getting him? And I was all for it. And I'm all for anybody that's uh, extremely productive. On top of that, he's from the University of Miami. And on top of that, he's been like a great player for a long time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get into some film of Calais and kind of see how he would help us and, and his his strong suits and, and how he's going to fit with Wink. But I, I do want to say this. There's two ways this thing can go before we get into the film. So we got Calais Campbell, and obviously we franchise tag Judon. So let's say both of them play. Both of them play with Baltimore this year. Judon sex is probably going to be 15+. plus. Because think about this scenario. Judon on one side. Uh, Williams in there. Uh, Calais as a five tech. And right now I think Ferguson as the, the other in edge type guy. So are, are you going to focus on Calais Campbell? Which will allow Judon one-on-ones. And will allow Ferguson one-on-ones. Because hopefully Ferguson and Campbell on the same side. So Judon Sacks will go through the roof and Ferguson will be able to eat a little more. But or are you gonna, you know, focus on blocking the the the, the our stand up guys and let Calais Campbell get off on you and run you about 10 sacks from a defensive line position? That's 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 interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. That that we could have all all those guys and our defensive line goes, you know, gets that much better just that fast. Cause not no no disrespect to Pierce. But Pierce was a run stuffer. Campbell can do both. Campbell can stuff the run and get after the passer. And yeah, yeah, I know everybody's saying he's 32, 33 ish. But hey, he ain't got he got to run in 10 yard spurts. Hopefully, no more than four four times in a row. That's it. So that's 40 yards of, of burst. You know, then go sit down for a long drive on offense because we're gonna be running the ball. The same way I, I mentioned the way our defense was so rested and played better when Lamar started to be the quarterback um, two years ago, we can do the same type thing. If we control the clock, which I always say, you know, us controlling the clock and running the ball is a, is a key to us winning. Campbell and I'll be fresh. 
He's an older guy. He'll be fresh. Come in, for play hard for three or four plays, go sit down for two or three, and hopefully drives over with. And hopefully we don't have no 10, 11, 12 play drives against us. Hopefully get a lot of three and outs, a lot of sixes and, and outs, and, you know, no more than seven, eight play drives, and they putting. You know, every now and then people going to get drives on us, which is understandable because it's football. But for the most part as a whole, he should be a rested player because, you know, we run the ball so well on offense. All right, the second scenario is they trade Juno and assign a trade. Hopefully that trade brings back uh, a pass rushing edge type person. And still, whoever that person is now takes on what we think Ju- what I think Judah is going to do. Now his sacks are going to go through the roof because you have to focus on Calais. You have to. If you don't, there's not a lot of guards that's going to be able to block this dude. It's not. Then we get in pass rush situations and you maybe stick him over the center. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I don't know of a center in the league that would be able to stop this dude. And he may not get the sack. He may not get the sack, but definitely the pressure. So you take, you know, back to the first scenario, you take Judon who got all that pressure on quarterbacks last year, and then you add it with Calais. And I read a stat, and I'm going to see if I can pull it up real quick. Then I'm going to get into the film. Come, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Really, I guess I can't find it no more. Click on this button. Go back. Here it is. All right, it says, and this is from ESPN.com. Campbell was effective last season, even though he recorded his fewest sacks since 2015. He ranked fourth in best pass rush win rate at 16.4%. Among players with 200 plus double teams. So he was double teamed 200 plus times. He got out of that 16% of the time and, and got after the quarterback. Do you know how hard it is to get out of a double team? Two people trying to stop you. That Do you know how hard it is? Not to, not to only stalemate the double team, but to beat it. Stalemating it is, a, is great in the run game, but beating it in the pass game is awesome. The only other people that fared better than Calais Campbell was number one, Aaron Donald, which we know he's he's the GOAT in, of d line right now. Number two, Grady Jarrett. And number three, Chris Jones. So that, that's that's three top-notch guys above Calais Campbell. And he way older than all them cats. So we can get two good years out of Calais Campbell. Hey, EDC. Shouts out to you, buddy. I believe in EDC. But now let's let's slide over to this film. So now we're ready for the film version of Calais Campbell. Again, recent addition to the Baltimore Ravens. And he played a, a myriad of techniques on along the defensive line. And I charted the the second game versus the Titans, which they lost, I think, 42 to 20 or something like that. And I'll give you the the, the stats off that that chart at the end of the video but um i picked clips from both tennessee titans games they played them both this year and obviously we all know what happened to us versus the titans so let's kind of get into the things he did good versus the titans and and kind of picture him doing these things in a ravens uniform so so keep in mind the the personnel that'll be around him in a ravens uniform and um you know just kind of wrap your thoughts around all right, but here he's positioned as a three technique. Get my mouse situated. Right, here we go. Position as a three technique. Just let it run through first. Just stuffing the run. Just stuffing the run. This is early in the season when Mariota was with the QB. So, oh, another thing. If you see Mariota as a QB, it was early in the year. And then when you see Tannehill in, it was late in the year. So, they, I think Jacksonville won this game. And they lost the game versus uh, Tannehill. But he's your three technique. You're just going to defeat the, defeat the block. Got an outside arm free. Gap integrity. Remember we talked about gap integrity a lot last year versus the, the Browns when we lost. Gap and got that outside on free. Getting that make the tackle. Leveraged him with that left shoulder. Look at that. Leveraged him with that left shoulder. Leveraged the center. 
kept that outside arm free. Now you can go make the tackle. That's textbook. Textbook gap integrity. You know what kills the inside, the, in, the outside inside zone? Penetration. And that's what he got. That kills outside and inside zone. Penetration. And he got it. If guys just run down the line and let these offensive linemen run, the running back, if he's worth a flip, will find a crease and cut it back. But penetration kills the inside and outside zone. Trust me, I know. Moving on to the next play. All right, it's a three take right here. Let's let it run through. Look at that rip. This is a screen. He don't even get the screen off. Look at that rip. There's no even dip. He just he just ripped. A nice rip. Rip right through his shoulder. And even though the line was, was half blocking him because it was a screen, look how fast he gets to the QB for a 33-year-old. He can't even get it off. And gets a quarterback hit. He gets a quarterback hit. Oh, actually, he gets a sack because he kept the ball. Gets a sack. That's quickness. Still got some quickness left in him now. So, so don't get it twisted. I, I saw somebody in one of our group chats talking about our D-line will be slow. All right, don't let it fool you now. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled at all. Our right, next play, he's lined up as a four technique. And again, this is still the game with Mariota at um, quarterback. Oh, I love the hand fight. I love the hand fight. See if I can stop it on it. Look at that hand. Look at it. You grab the all lineman wrist, throw it down, get by. Throw it down and get by. See if I can stop it. Right there. Great. Took this guy's wrist. Gonna slap it down so he can't get hands on him. Then gonna get that shoulder by him. Now it's on to the quarterback. It's on to the quarterback now. Probably a holding. But that caused the incompletion. And with the DBs we got, that might be an exception. Now on this play, he's a four tech again. Come back with a different move. Same dude, different move. Gonna go inside of him. Watch the face slap. Bow. It's probably a hand slap though. I just wanna say face slap. Got here. Slow it down. Slap. Re uh, shoulder at the quarterback. Slap. Verse. Eat the QB. On this play, he's a four technique. Again, they move around so much. Moving around so much. Gap integrity again. Gap integrity again. He has his inside gap. Gets hands on the guy. Stays in his gap. And now when the running back tries to press his gap and go somewhere else, he crosses his face and it's right in another one. So he basically two gapping without without meaning to do it. He basically two gapping without meaning to do it. And I'll show what I mean. I right, initially. He has this gap. This is his gap he's trying to protect. Somebody else has this gap somebody has contained. So when, when Henry comes downhill and tries to hit it in here and realizes, oh, snap, somebody's here, I'm going to bounce to the next one, he throws his guy by and then ends up in this gap. So he two gaps without purposely doing it. So he's in this, let's, let's see what initial gap this is. This is a backside B gap. This is backside B. Okay, I'm pressing it there. I see this little gap. I see this little C gap opening right here. Boom, he right back there. Even though he got somebody crashing down, he still led to prevent a clean run through. So he two gapping without even necessarily meaning to do it. We don't have D linemen that do that. They they'll blow one gap up and, and protect that gap, but we don't we don't have a lot of two gapping out of the D linemen we got. And again, I'm not complaining about the D linemen we got. I'm just stating facts. Hey, we have him as a wide five, and I say wide five, and 
because you know regular five to me he would be a little tighter there's no tight end out here so it's not a seven so i'm just calling him a wide five i could be wrong but you know this my interpretation of it now what's gonna happen is he's gonna push up the field and then he's gonna i don't know if this is a stunt or that he sees it and then loops back in there but let's watch it And you know, looking at the from right here it looks like a stunt. But let me show you why I think I don't know if it's a stunt or not. He's rushing and he peeks in right there and sees this gap opening. And now maybe he's peeking to see if the, the guard's engaged to know when to, to loop, or maybe he's just that heady to where he sees that opening and, and goes. But it could be a stunt, it could not be. But he loops right in there to the QB. Takes a great angle. Right off his D tackle's butt. No wasted movement, no wasted space. Right off his butt. Look at that. Even slaps he slaps the uh falling left tackle right tackle out the way. He lunging. Get out of the way. And cuts right off of that block. Right to the QB. No wasted movement. No wasted steps. Set him up. Set him up. And I'm almost I'm gonna lean on this as a stunt now, cause what I just noticed is watch how the guard tries to engage the tackle also. I mean, not the guard. Watch how this guy right here tries to engage this tackle also. He's also, he's heavily engaged right here. And he still is trying to put his hands on him. So this, this is a stunt. This is a stunt. Perfectly executed. On this play, here's a five tech again. Just making stuff happen against the run. You got two different guys trying to put hands on them. Even though both of them tight ends, they these are really sucky blocks, but it's a double team and he defeated it and and didn't make the tackle, but affected the tackle. So 81 tries to block him. Quick swim on him because he go in with his head down. Real quick. I right, got him out of the way. 84 is in a bad position, so the double team is already split. So now I'm trying to get to 31. And he's in the running back season. He just has, she tries to like jump through the hole and him leaving his feet allows the other defenders to get in there and make the tackle. And there's somebody else made this tackle, but this play is on Calais Campbell. Yeah, somebody else made the tackle, but this is this is, this is a Calais Campbell's uh, effect on the run game. All right, now, this, this game right here, the second game, they avoided Calais Campbell. I mean, avoided him, avoided him, avoided him. They ran away from him. They ran boots off of him. They avoided him like big time. So let's see what happened a couple of times they tried to go at him. He's in the C gap. And he his his responsibility is you know pre-snap is C gap. Watch what happens. He crosses two people face and ends up in the A gap. He goes from C to A. Starts in the C. Gonna cross two guys and get to the A. So now Henry's, you know, running the little stretch or whatever. He's destroyed the blocking scheme. So far, he's destroyed it. Made it cut back. Because this is Campbell right here. And that's where initially the ball was going. On the inside zone. Now he's he's blowed this up. He made a, a a muck a muck of the blocking scheme, and Henry has to cut back because this doc this Joe this dude has done a good job of blocking down. So why this linebacker still sitting five yards away? I do not know. He should close space and make this tackle right here because he's unblocked. These two guys are playing pocket pool with this guy out here. Close that space and, and and go make the darn tackle. I mean we know this Megatron, but at least go cut him or something. Watch what he does. Allows him to see him. So instead of being a tackle for a loss right there or a, a no gain, he gets six, five or six yards because he falls forward. Five or six yards because he falls forward. Close that space. And I know this is a Kaleos camera film, but I'm still a little perturbed. You out here dancing. Close the space. Close the space. Close the space. 
Cause that's your gap any darn way. Now that I'm looking at it, close the space. You see, the handoff's there. Cause you, you, I guess you gotta check for him to see he don't go to the flats. He don't go to the flats, close your space. And maybe I'm being picky, maybe I'm not. But let's go to the last play. Uh, he's in a six or six eye. Can't, I would say six eye, cause six he would be head up, he'd be head to head. So let's say that's a six eye. And they obviously they overloaded this side. You got your guard, tackle, and an extra tackle over here, and a tight end, and you still got just your, your, your guard and your tackle on this side. And again, this is one of the shoot. Uh, he's in a six or six eye right here. Uh, let's say it's a six eye because his head is inside that guy's head. So that's a six eye. And again, they didn't run much at Calais Campbell. But the, the first play, I don't know if it was the first, I don't know if this was the first play or the other one I just showed you. I just kind of put him in here. But this is one of the two term two times they ran directly at Campbell. You see all this overload and I got what how many linemen in here? One, two, three, four, five, six linemen in here. Two tight ends, that's eight. Quarterback, running back, that's 10. So I guess they got one receiver floating somewhere around here. They running that Campbell. He's crossing 78's face. They slanting. So he's trying to get from this, what is this? A, B, C gap. Trying to get to this B gap. Trying to get to this B gap. Crosses, tries to cross 78's face. Does a good job with leverage and throwing that shoulder in there. I'm trying to get that on by so he can keep that outside on free. Or the inside on free because he's going inside. Now, this is where the ball should go because there's a little gap, you know, forming because they're going down. This guy's blocking out. Now, with that being said, he can't really go backside because this dude is crashed so hard on the, the puller because they run a little split zone deal. So Henry's going to be forced to try to Hit it right there and get what he can get. Because right now the play is pretty much over. The, pretty, the play is pretty much dead unless he can bounce it out here and, and, and get around. But he can't. Now he gets that arm free. Sticks that free arm in there. And with the help of the, the guy setting the edge, makes the tackle. But not only does he make the tackle, tackle he rips the ball out. Jaguars recover. So statistically for this last game, this is his only play. But as you can see some of those clips, and all these clips with Tannehill in the game, his impact was way more than his statistics. So if we got Ravens fans looking at his stats and, and saying, well, he didn't do much, and, and man, bump that. This dude's a baller. And he's going to affect everybody on that defense, including the secondary. Including the secondary. Like the play I showed you at the goal line where he, he got to the QB and, it, and Tanny Hill just kind of threw it up and the DB knocked it down. But the DBs we got, that's a pick, man. That's a, that's a turnover. And, and more possessions we get on offense, the better we'll be offensively. So I, I'm I'm excited about this pickup from Eric, from Eric DaCosta. Um, Calais, welcome. 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 Ravens Nation, we, we got us one. We got us one. Uh, free agency starts Wednesday. I don't know how much more we better to do because our money's probably low. But focus on the draft now. We got Calais Campbell, a dude of this impact, for a fifth-round pick. For a fifth-round pick. And again, I said I charted that, that second game. This is what we got on the charts. Uh, Calais Campbell was double-teamed seven times. He was cut twice. He was unblocked or red seven times. He was single-blocked. 14 times they moved the pocket away from him twice and they pinned and pulled him once So that's all the stuff they did to him and they single blocked him a couple times But again, they run a lot of outside zone and he didn't make a lot of tackles But he'll he'll he forced some cutbacks and, and things of that nature All right, his alignments, which is where wink or wink is gonna have a field day with him. He lined up as a five tick said 17 times as a four tick. Five, I'm sorry four I five times as a one one time, as a three, six times, as a wide five once, as a four twice, and as a seven once. And in this game, he also had three quarterback hits. 
But when you look at the stat sheet for that game, he only had that four, that, that one tackle and forced fumble. Tell me this guy not going to help, you know, what we already got on defense. If it's your first time here, make sure you click that comment button. Uh, hit the like button. You know, we need likes around here. And also share it with somebody. Share it with somebody that's at home, chilling, don't have much to do, or at work. They can listen to it, you know, while they commuting or whatever. And again, I appreciate you guys. And this is Coach Evans. See you when I see you. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,